Welcome to our lecture online. Now we're ready to actually solve the problem, which means finding the two currents I1 and I2 in the circuit that has mutual coupling. All right, we already have the two equations from going around each of the loops, KVL1, KVL2, and then we turn that into a matrix format so we can go ahead and solve it like this for I1 and I2. What we're going to do now is find the three determinants to find I1 and I2. So first of all, the determinant, let me give myself a little more room here, D is equal to, we'll go ahead and copy this, so we have 4 plus J3, we have minus J8, we have minus J8, and 5 plus J18, like this. All right, and that is found by first multiplying these two together. So we have 4 times 5, which is 20. We have J3 times J18. 18 times 3 is 54. But we have J times J, which is nine, negative 1. So that would be minus 54. And then we have the product of 5 times J3, which is 15 J3, and 4 times 18 uh, J18, that's 72 plus 15, that's 87, so it would be plus J87. So that's the product of these two, now we subtract the product of these two. Wow, with the negative signs that gets a little complicated, so minus times minus, that gives me a plus. But J times J gives me a negative, but since I'm subtracting, that becomes a plus again, 8 times 8, that gives me plus 64. So we have uh, minus 54 plus 64, that's plus 10 plus 20, that would be 30 plus J87. So that's the determinant. Now we find D1. D1, which is equal to the same determinant, but with the first column replaced by these two values right here. So we have 100. And zero, we keep those two, we have minus J8 and 5 plus J18. Since we have that zero in there, at least we don't have to worry about this product, so only about this product. So we end up with 100 times 5 and 100 times J18, so this becomes 100. Oh, let me write it like this. So 100 times 5, that would be 500 plus. 100 times 18, that would be J1800. Now, it might behoove us to simply write it as 100 times 5 plus J18. We'll see later how that works out. All right, now we find D2. So D2, that is equal to, now we take the same matrix like this, but we replace the second column by 100 and 0. So we end up with 4 plus J3, and minus J8, and then we plug that in here, it should be an 8, 100, and 0. Again, with the 0 makes it a little bit easier, we don't have to worry about this product, but we do have to worry about this product. Now we subtract this product, so that would be minus, times this minus becomes a plus, and J8 times 100, that would be J800. All right, so now it's fairly easy to find the two currents, I1 is equal to D1 over D. So in this case, D1 <coughs> gives us uh, 100 times 5 plus J18. And D is 30 plus J87. Okay. Now, of course, we want to convert from... Uh, to magnitude and phase format, that makes it easier, so that becomes uh, 25 plus 18 squared. Take the square root, that gives me 18.68. I can't get the cap off here. All right, so that would be 100 times 18.68, 6, with a phase angle of, see, 18.68, yep. So now we have 18 divided by 5, 18 divided by 5, and we get the inverse tangent, that would be 74.476. Hmm. So 74.48, 74.48 degrees to two decimal places, all right? And in the denominator, here we have 87 squared 
times 30 squared equals, take the square root of that, something is wrong here. Let me try it again. 87 squared plus 900, take the square root, gives me 92.03, 92.03 with a phase angle of 87 divided by 30, take the inverse tangent, gives me 70, ah, yeah, 70, 0.97 degrees. Okay, so now we go ahead and divide the numerator by the denominator. So that gives us 100 times 18.68 divided by 92.03 equals, that's uh, 20.3, so this is equal to 20.3. And for the phase angle, we have this minus that, so we have 74.48 minus 70.97, that gives us 3.51 degrees. And that, uh, and that would be in amps, of course, because we're looking for the current, so I1 equals this current right here. All right, we do the same now for I2. So for I2, that is equal to D2 over D. So in this case, uh, D2 gives me J800, converted to the phase format, that would be 800, with a phase angle of a positive 90 degrees, divided by, well, D, we already have the format right here, that would be 92.03, with a phase angle of 70.97 degrees, and 800 divided by 92.03 gives us 8.69, how about calling it 8.7? So 8.7 with a phase angle of 90 minus 71, close enough, uh, that would be 20.03 degrees, I saw, or 19.03 degrees. And that's also in amps, and that would be I2. Let's see here, 8.7, yeah, that's about right. Okay, there you go, there's your two currents, I1 and I2. So once you have these two equations correct, the rest is just very mechanical. The whole idea, of course, is with the mutual coupling, you do have to be very careful to figure out how many couplings there are. In this case, there were four additional couplings we have to worry about. And make sure you get the signs correct by using these two rules right here. So you have to identify which currents go through which inductor and whether or not they enter the inductors both on the dot side or on the opposite side of the dot, that's entering the same for both currents, or if one enters the dot and the other one enters the opposite side from the dot, then we have the opposite entry, and that's when you get either a voltage drop or a voltage rise defined by the mutual coupling, coupling right there. And that is how it's done.